I'm taking the loose hair at its roots and retwisting it back into the locks. Daniela Lewis takes pride in her work. People formerly called them dreadlocks, but I call them locks because I don't see our hair as dreadful. It's just locked. <laughs> The staff at Lakewood's Miss Beautiful Me says traditionally black hairstyles like locks, braids, and afros are making a comeback. And how we wear our hair, it's our crown. You gotta be able to wear your crown however you want to. But it hasn't always been that way. I was asked to wear my hair more professionally when I wore it in an afro one day. Whether it comes from a boss or a high school coach, shown here forcing a wrestler to cut his locks, preventing someone from having their hair in its natural state is now illegal in Washington. Those hairstyles are protected, just like race and religion. We are the fifth state to ban this type of discrimination, and I want to thank Representative Morgan for a way to help people feel free in their own identity. I am proud to vote yes. Why? Because black hair is beautiful. Melanie Morgan sponsored the bill. And I, Melanie Morgan, will not tolerate any discrimination in our state of Washington. House Bill 2602 is declared passed. The bill passed overwhelmingly with bipartisan support. But Representative Morgan says originally some fellow Democrats told her to hold off. Actually, they told me no. And it was extremely hurtful. And matter of fact, I cried. Representative Morgan did not take no for an answer. She fought and prevailed and said the hair discrimination issue was just one of many that likely would not come to light if people of color were not represented at the legislature. Because I have the actual experience. It is not textbook, this is my life. I am a black woman who's been alive for 52 years encountering issues, whether it be subtle or whether it be in my face. And is this the first time we've had a black house caucus? Are you, are, am I looking at the first? It's well, we had one, it was, it, was, it was a member of one, and then it was a member of member two. Member of one. <laughs> and then, uh, but now we're up to five. The speaker has opened the roll call machine. Of the 98 Washington State That's Representatives, five House members are black. Representatives Morgan, Eric Pettigrew, Deborah Entenman, Jesse Johnson, and John Lovick. You're celebrating the fact that today there are five members, but we, we need more. Right? I mean, a five is not enough. We need more and we will, we will get more. Clerk, take the record, please. Representative Lovick was first elected in 1998, at the time, the only Black House member, until Eric Pettigrew was elected in 2002. One of Pettigrew's earliest Olympia interactions involved the N-word. There was a, a senior senator uh, who made a comment in the course of a negotiations uh, saying, you know, oh, uh, whoever the person is, you're just being an in in the woodpile. And uh, and that really uh, bothered me, one. And then when I took it back to my own caucus and talked to them about it, the response was like, uh, you know, well, he's going to die off anyway, so don't worry about it. There are members of our legislature that have thought that they have been doing what is right for African-American people and people of color without asking us what we need and what we thought is important. So now we are speaking for ourselves. Representative Entenman chairs the Black Caucus, a subgroup of lawmakers. She hopes this caucus will grow. And as we know, there's strength in numbers. Um, so it definitely counts to have people on the same page in terms of uh, what we want to get done. At 30, Representative Jesse Johnson is the youngest state legislator. He's seen his generation call for reform and thinks those voices will reach Olympia. Whereas before, I think we've lived in this diversity, equity, and inclusion era where we try to dance around the issue without directly saying we need to do something about this in particular. And the Black community is at the forefront of those conversations, and we're centering Black voices in the conversations, I think, for the first time I've seen in my own lifetime. We don't have a Black Senate caucus because we don't have a Black senator upsetting it makes our work harder when we don't have representation on the other side if we write bills for our community we would like to have representation on the other side that understands why we're writing this piece of legislation and not having to um over explain as we often do which drains us a lot there's no doubt that having all of you inside the room when it happens 
is the best way to, to, to bring about reform, correct? I mean, there's yes. nothing better than having that voice in there. Absolutely. Yeah. We're reaching out, we're reaching back to members in the community, uh, letting them see the great work that we're doing, letting them see that, you know, you can go out and run for office. Uh, you might lose, but if you don't run, you're not gonna win. In our state legislature, we have had allies, but now it is time for us to speak for ourselves and stand for ourselves. That's the only way things get done. You gotta stand up for yourself. Just like with the hair discrimination bill, back at the salon, Daniela Lewis hopes more issues important to her community will be heard in Olympia soon. That's why it's important to have different representations in our government and everything so that they can fight for everybody.